Hey, party people, welcome back to the channel. Today is July 31st, 2023. It has been exactly 30 days since I posted my last build video. Um, I think many of you knew that I was leaving town uh, for a few days and a few days turned into a month. Uh, while I was away visiting my parents, I got a work call and uh, ended up going to Paris for three weeks. Got back a couple days ago. Um, no new building has occurred yet and none will occur on this video. Instead, this video is gonna be uh, what laser cut parts mean to me. Um, by now, most of you have probably um, heard some of the uproar surrounding um, laser cut parts that went to builders who purchased their kits sometime around the time that I did. So think about like early uh, 2022 up until the present. Um, Vans and really everybody had a huge backlog. Um, uh, you know, during the pandemic, uh, people found out that even though they didn't have jobs, they had money and they wanted new hobbies. And so we all know that the world um, of hobbies and specifically building airplanes um, grew exponentially during that time. And then following that, we had the famous, uh, what was it, supply chain crisis and whatnot. So take all that into account. And Vans decided to, uh, to help them get caught up that they would outsource the production of some of their parts um, with some third party contractors. Um, they were very specific in how they went about um, sort of proving out their contractors and the instructions that they were given and sample products and whatnot. But at some point along the way, within the process, um, some or one or two, or I don't know how many they were, uh, contractors went off book and started um, making these uh, parts just a little bit differently than, than what Vans had instructed. And the result was um, that builders started receiving uh, parts with um, oddly shaped or poorly cut holes. The, the, con the Vans um, historically uh, punches their parts in, in the so-called pre-punch kits. They're called pre-punch because the holes are punched. Uh, the vendors that they contracted to use laser CNC, and from what I understand, and remember that you're getting this information from me like fifth hand. Uh, from what I understand, Van's discussion last week at Oshkosh, the, um, the original process for cutting those holes with the laser was what they described as a pretzel. So you'd start in the middle, come work your way out and then finish again in the middle to avoid getting any hot spots along the edge of the hole. Um, and at some point, um, the process that was being used by the contractors turned into circle cutting the holes, which resulted in a hot spot and some really poorly shaped holes that got notches in them. Um, but why is this an issue? Well, obviously you want a round hole. Um, and get, Vans gave, gave some guidance on this once they uh, started getting some feedback from builders that, uh, that they were receiving parts this way. Um, I think um, that um, before those parts went out, they went through Vans QC and they found them to be within spec and everything like that. Uh, but then there were some, the poorly cut holes are not all equally as poorly cut. Some are worse than others. And uh, in recent weeks or months, uh, some builders noticed that after they have dimpled the holes, following Van's guidance and cleaning up the holes with a, with a needle file and then dimpling the holes and then riveting them, the holes, uh, the dimples would crack. And that's a problem. Um, so what does that mean to me? Well, uh, Van's has provided a list of all the parts for different kits that were shipped during a specific period that could potentially have been laser cut parts. And this is a laser cut part that's in my hand. This specific one will not be going in my airplane. Uh, this is a flap brace. I'm not to the flaps yet. This was on the list. I've looked at it. Um, there are some wonky holes on here and I'll throw a picture up here of uh, this hole right here um, before and after reaming the hole. Uh, it's very likely that this example that I show you would still be perfectly serviceable. Um, I think that the biggest problem 
will be for uh, RV14 and RV10 builders because those kits are punched to final size. Uh, RV8 builders and the rest of us, I suppose, our kits are all slightly undersized and so we have to final size drill those holes so um, we can eliminate a lot, if not all of the imperfection by simply doing the expected task, which is to upsize the holes. That being said, um, on the list, and this is kind of what the list looks like right here, there are a lot of parts marked in red. Um, the information, uh, sort of the key to the list, describes parts as either being replaced, which is red, uh, yellow means continued testing or ongoing testing, uh, then you've got uh, undersized holes or holes that don't have, or, or parts that don't have dimples and so are therefore unaffected by this specific problem. Um, I'll provide links to a couple of videos from other builders that I think um, sort of tackled this question early on and they've been very involved in that process. So those are good resources. I'll also attach a link to the Vans Air Force thread that uh, um, grows by the minute that covers this and then a link to uh, Vans Aircraft statement on this. Um, they, the Vans explained that when they tested parts that had these types of cracks in the dimples, if they were within a certain spec, um, they could not, or to, to date, were not able to get those cracks to propagate, to turn into something bigger that, could, that would lead to a catastrophic failure. That being said, there are still defective parts and the, it needs to be addressed. Why roll the dice on that? Um, for me, when we looked at the list here, on the wings, which is what I'm working on right now, obviously, I've been doing that for a while, um, flap and aileron spars and, and uh, some other components, but I think spars, flap brace and whatnot, those are on the list. I'm not to those parts yet, so I'll simply get those replaced and uh, move on with my life. Um, Vans, uh, I, I guess I didn't say it, but Vans will not be using any laser cut parts from now on. Um, they have purchased new, like additional um, punch type CNC, whatever. Engineers know what it is, I don't. But new uh, machines to um, to increase their output from their own factory and they're not gonna outsource that anymore. Um, but on the things that I've already completed with the wings, um, the fuel tanks, uh, the very last piece that went on, the rear baffle, that is listed as a part that's laser cut. And I know in fact that mine was laser cut and more importantly, laser punched. The confusing part about that is the, the issue that exists, the problem that exists are with dimpled holes. There are no dimpled holes on the tank baffle, so I have to ask myself, why did they list it? And here's why I think that they did. Um, this is speculation. I did call Vans Builder Support just to see if they had any insight on this, and, and they tend to agree with my theory on this, but we'll all be patient and wait for final guidance from Vans which is still many weeks, if not a couple of months out. Um, previously, and I think we talked about this when I was building the tanks, but it used to be on the RV8, RV7, and others that uh, that rear tank baffle, um, the holes that will attach the, the baffle flange to the skin, those were dimpled. And they stopped doing that in the plans, they described that they stopped requiring builders to do that because once you get that thing buttered up with seal, it was just such a pain in the ass to try to get that thing in place with you know the dimpled skin. Yeah. Anyways, too difficult to do. The skin is thick enough. It's I think 32 thousandths on the tank. The skin is thick enough to just go ahead and machine countersink it to basically a knife edge and leave the flange of the baffle untouched. So that's the current construction. My tank baffles don't have any dimpled holes. Um, and furthermore, um, if you look at the properties of uh, pro seal or tank sealant, um, they go far beyond simply creating uh, an airtight seal. 
um, they they create a pretty strong bond. If you there are certain there are some aircraft out there, certificated aircraft, that um, in their wings will opt for pro seal and no rivets at all. Uh, do your own research, but that's fact. So um, I don't think that the tank baffle is necessarily a concern at this point for me. I think that they had to put it on the list there just in case somebody was building one of these with the laser cut baffle using an old set of plans and they were in fact dimpling it or maybe they just wanted to dimple it. They didn't like the idea of countersinking the skin. So you have to CYA, you gotta cover your ass in that. So I'm gonna go ahead and pressure test my tanks as planned, even if, if it turned out that I had to tear my tanks apart and replace that baffle, I still wanna pressure test them to find out if I did a good job because uh, that's an opportunity to learn. If in fact I did a bad job, I'd wanna know that <laughs> before I rebuilt them. Um, that's it for the wings. I don't think that I will have to do anything with the, with the baffle. There are no dimples there. Uh, the next thing, um, which is earlier in the order of building, is the empennage. And there are quite a few parts um, that are listed for the empennage kit that fall in that potentially laser cut. And when I say potentially laser cut, the parts were, if you received a kit, if your kit was created during a certain period of time, you may have received a punch part or laser cut part. They're basically just pulled off the shelf. The, 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 the parts were sort of, you know, it's the same part, they were, they were shelved together, so you could have got one or the other. I do know for a fact that my, uh, okay, what are the big parts in the empennage? This is one that really kind of scares me. Uh, what are the big parts on the empennage kit that um, are flagged as red? Um, on the horizontal stabilizer, it is both the rear spars and the front spars. The rear spars, I know, were laser cut. I don't know if the holes were crappy because it's like the very one of the very first things that I built. I don't think that I would, I wouldn't know enough to recognize. Um, I mean, a, a really bad hole for sure, but something that's slight. And if you look at um, Bald Man building an airplane and the pictures that he posts uh, of the cracks that he found, um, I think that the average person is not just gonna go, hey, there's a crack there. Um, it takes a little sniffing around to see those things. That being said, the rear spar is easy to inspect uh, on the horizontal stabilizer. It is sort of on the outside, those dimples, uh, those riveted uh, dimpled holes are on the outside of the, uh, of the piece, which means that I can inspect them pretty easily and I'll be doing that over the next couple of days. The forward spar though, that is a different story. Um, it may be that uh, I finally get to put my, uh, my bore scope uh, to use and hopefully, Hopefully that thing is long enough to run the length of the inside and the outside. I honestly don't recall if the the forward spars were, uh, if they were covered in blue vinyl or not when I got them. I tried to look back through my photos to find out. And uh, I do have some photos of my kit on the shelves as I was inventorying and unpacking it. But all of those spars are kind of sandwiched together and it's just too hard to tell. If, if one piece is has the blue on it or not. So I can't say for sure. I'll have to do the best I can to inspect it. Uh, okay, the rudder, both spars of the, the rudder are also, um, also laser cut. And uh, again, I, I don't have, I, I went back and looked at videos. I went back and looked at photographs and I don't see myself in any of those things pulling blue vinyl off of them. I can't say that they didn't have them, uh, but I just, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll have to do the best that I can to inspect them. And then lastly, uh, the basically everything related to the trim uh, assembly on the left elevator. I think the trim is on the left elevator, yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah, so the the trim tab spar and then the trim spar that it attaches to both of those and then the uh, the trim motor, the, the horns that, um, that hold the actuating arm, those also. <sighs> Boy, 
It's, uh, there is a, <laughs> there's a pretty good chance that I might have to rebuild most of my empennage kit. I, I am not excited about the time and energy that it will take to do that, but I do know that uh, if I have to do it, um, <laughs> I'll do a better job the second time. Um, I've learned so much since then. So that's where I sit with laser cut parts right now. Um, I know that uh, Vans is doing everything they can to do right by uh, the builders, which are their community and it is somewhat of a family. Um, I do appreciate the fact that they are not um, sort of knee jerk, just spitting out information, but they're being very thoughtful and deliberate in the process. And what I mean by that is, there is a lot of engineering uh, work up and testing that has to be done on what the potential implications of these things are, and that takes time. So they have provided as much information as they are able. Some of it, I think, is uh, intentionally um, ambiguous because they don't want to commit to a certain uh, process of thought until they have adequate uh, data to support one thing or the other. So. Builders like me are going to have to be patient. I, I do have stuff that I can do. Um, I'll go ahead and, and uh, pressure test the tanks, and then I can move on to building the leading edges of the wings and start um, getting the skins um, riveted on and all that sort of stuff. And so I will be busy enough regardless, but um, it's certainly not uh, great news. Um, we'll see how it all pans out in the end, and obviously I'll keep you posted. I think I've rambled long enough on the topic. Um, I'll go ahead and cut this together, put it out to you, and then uh, tomorrow we will resume building an airplane. So. Thanks for being here. Um, I will do the best I can to respond intelligently to any feedback you guys have on this uh, topic and uh, we'll see where it goes. So anyways, let's build an airplane.